Hello. Okay, so I wanted to talk about something that my doctor's having me do without doing a full update, which I'm long overdue for, but, um, I don't know. You know, things just are depressing for all of us, and it's important to share information, but I just haven't felt like an update. But anyway, so, um, here's something new that my doctor is having. Um, all of us that have basically neurological Lyme and brain problems do on top of, you know, our normal medicine protocol. It's a, a supplemental thing. So I'll read it to you. Um, short chain fatty acid. Mary Newport, MD, has been medical director of the neonatal intensive care unit at Spring Hill Regional Hospital in Florida since it opened in 2003. About the same time the unit opened, her husband, Steve, then 53, began showing signs of progressive dementia, later diagnosed as Alzheimer's disease. Many days, often for several days in a row, he was in a fog, couldn't find a spoon or remember how to get, out, get water out of the refrigerator, she said. She discovered that with Alzheimer's disease, certain brain cells may have difficulty utilizing glucose made from the carbohydrates we eat, the brain's principal source of energy. Without fuel, these precious neurons may begin to die. There is an alternative energy source for brain cells, fat known as ketones. Um, if deprived of carbohydrates, the body produces ketones naturally. But this is the hard way to do it. Who wants to cut carbohydrates out of the diet completely? Another way to produce ketones is by consuming oils that have medium-chain triglycerides. When MCT, for short, oil di is digested, the liver converts it into ketones. In the first few weeks of life, ketones provide about 25% of the energy newborn babies need to survive. Dr. Newport learned that the ingredient in the drug trial, which was showing so much promise, was simply MCT oil derived from coconut oil or palm kernel oil, and that a dose of 20 grams, about 20 milliliters or 4 teaspoons, was used to produce these results. When MCT oil is metabolized, the ketones which the body creates may, according to the latest research, not only protect, protect against the incidence of Alzheimer's, but may actually reverse it. Moreover, this is also a potential treatment for Parkinson's disease, Huntington's disease, multiple sclerosis, and amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, which is ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease, drug-resistant epilepsy, brittle type 1 diabetes, and type 2 insulin-resistant diabetes. The ketones from natural coconut oil stayed in the body longer than drugs for Alzheimer's disease and dementia. Research is indicating that this MCT oil is metabolized to ketone. Um, so we're doing it for neurological healing and reversal, ideally. So what it is, is a mix of medium chain triglycerides and coconut oil. Um, you mix 16 ounces of MCT with coconut oil, 12 ounces of coconut oil in a quart jar. You gradually increase one teaspoon from one teaspoon over a period of one week to four to six tablespoons a day, depending on the age of the person, and you spread it over two to four meals. The combination of these two oils provides a higher levels and a steady level of ketones. You store them at room temperature to keep in liquid form. Um, okay, so this is the bottle of the of the medium chain triglyceride oil. It comes from New Medical, uh, New Medica, MCT oil, USP, medium chain triglycerides, an integral part of the HC3 program, zero carbs, dietary supplement. Um, and, and what this says is, medium chain triglycerides are a special type of fatty acids Normal fats and oils contain long-chain fatty acids. When compared to these fatty acids, medium-chain triglycerides are much shorter in length, thus resembling carbohydrates more than fat. As a result, they are more quickly absorbed by the body and metabolized as fuel. Because of this quick metabolism, the calories in MCTs are very efficiently converted into fuel for immediate use in the mitochondria instead of being stored as fat. 
MCTs have been shown to enhance thermogenesis, which is heat production, in the body, Cooper, thereby promoting the burning of fat. MCTs contain fewer calories than long-chain triglycerides, are metabolized quicker, and actually contribute to an enhanced metabolism to burn even more calories. MCT oil can be used as a substitute for conventional oils in salad dressings, sauces, or cooking as a source of beneficial fatty acids. It is not recommended for use in frying due to its low boiling points. MCT oil may cause a mild laxative effect. Um, and anyway, so okay, you mix this with coconut oil. I don't know if you can see it. There. There we go. Coconut oil. <laughs> um, and this is just expeller pressed coconut oil, tropical traditions, 32 fluid ounces. Um, and then I'll read about this too. Cooper, stop it please. Uh, Tropical Traditions Expeller Pressed Coconut Oil is a certified organic coconut oil from the Philippines. It is naturally refined without the use of solvent extracts. It is not hydrogenated, contains no trans fatty acids, and is high in lauric acid. Um, this natural coconut oil will solidify under 76 degrees Fahrenheit. Above 76 degrees, it will remain a liquid. Store out of direct sunlight, blah, blah, blah. It does not need refrigeration. So you mix this one with the medium chain triglycerides. Um, and again, it was, you mix 16 ounces of the medium chain triglycerides with coconut oil, 12 ounces, in a quart jar. Um, we, in my house, we just sort of um, reconfigured for a smaller bottle, and it's in here. We just went to our pharmacy, and they're so nice, because we spend so much money there. And um, the pharmacist just gave me some of these. Um, to mix the stuff in and right now I'm just starting and I take one teaspoon a day um, and then at the same time she changed up my omega supplement she felt like that was very important and it even says here within um, Mary Newport's research to add the yes PEO parent essential oils along with the other two oils and so this is the Yes um, bottle, and um, she is saying that this is so far surpasses my other omega-3, which was a good omega omega combination, but this has e uh, evening primrose oil, linoleic sunflower oil, flax oil, pumpkin oil, extra virgin coconut oil, linoleic safflower oil. Um, and I take, right now, four of these a day. I've been taking this longer than the oils. And actually, I notice with this, um, it's sort of like the Baluki. I can't take the Baluki anymore because of my stomach problems and ulcers and gastroparesis and it causes vomiting and stuff. But um, this is sort of how the Baluki used to feel. It, it really sort of purifies, feels like it purifies my blood and makes me feel sort of less toxic. And gives me a little bit more energy. So I'm really liking um, this. And it's Yes um, product, Scientifically Advanced Nutritional Supplements, Ultimate EFAs Dietary Supplement. And I don't know if it says like anything about the parent company, but not really. So that is just something new that my doctor is having everyone with neurological problems doing. She attended a seminar with some of the other doctors around the country. Um, and a lot of people are going to be trying this. So maybe you guys are already doing this and I just have missed the videos. Or maybe you just haven't made a video and a lot of people that are doing like um, homeopathic treatments are already doing stuff like this. but. I just thought I would share. Um, I'm still doing Zithromax, Zithromycin, IVs twice, about twice a week, and um, 
sometimes we're Cephan IVs. I don't have a pick of reports, which makes life sort of difficult because at this point most of my veins are like knotted or in collapse. Um, so it's really difficult to get the line in every time I go. Um, and I've even been turned away because they've exceeded the maximum number of sticks. Um, and it's been scary a couple of times when I've been really ill and I've needed to get a fluid line. Cooper, please stop. A fluid line in, um, and they couldn't get it in, and they had to do some serious other stuff to get me um, hydrated. But So um, I'm doing those IVs. Um, I can no longer do oral ABX because um, I'm having sporadic, I guess, gastroparesis. I have to work really, really hard to keep my stomach and everything else in there not paralyzed. Um, and I'm still, of course, doing uh, heparin trochies, which are blood thinners, and... Um, Progesterone cream and Neurontin for the seizures and um, depression and oxycodone for the pain and lorazepam for relaxation and what else do I take on any kind of daily basis? Of course, like um, probiotics, um, but I, I I am on a lot less oral medication just because. I'm pretty successful when I'm not on, oh, Mepron, of course, I'm on Mepron, because um, we're still treating my Babesha. My numbers started to lower um, in August, and then it fought back like hardcore, <laughs> and um, it just totally took over again, <laughs> so... So we're here in Babisha. I haven't been able to really move forward to work on anything else. Um, I guess I am doing an update. Look at me just rattling on. But I was talking about this stuff, so I was talking about meds, I guess, protocol. So I am not on very many orals. I used to be on just like what felt like thousands of orals a day, and I just, my stomach can't do it. I had um, bleeding ulcers and stuff in the late spring, early summer, and... Um, went down almost like below 100 pounds and clearly that's returned which is a great thing because I feel like it's padding for if that happens again um oh I'm on um sul sulcrophate sul sulcral fates for my ulcers to coat my stomach and promethazine for the nausea so that I can eat um and a lot of laxatives. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's not even intended to be gross. The laxatives do nothing, actually, because it's not really constipation when we talk about gastroparesis, as you guys know. It's paralysis. So it's not painful, and it's not like you need to go to the bathroom. It's like your stomach is in complete paralysis and doesn't digest your food, and eventually rotten food comes up in the form of vomit. Mmm. And, um... So anyway, that's why I'm avoiding a lot of orals. They've created ulcers and stuff like that. And I've been having kidney problems. I've been waiting on cue to see a urologist, which I will see on Halloween. And then they're going to do, I know, she's going to order some tests, some that are really fun. <laughs> um, and so my kidneys were already sort of in peril. And we're not exactly clear how badly off. I am in that situation. And then we discover that I have fatty liver and liver disease, and it is pretty far progressed. And um, so I'm having some dietary changes. My diet wasn't horrific to begin with, but I'm um, sort of having to eliminate any complex, like, protein so my liver doesn't have to clean that out, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I am looking at my time and I'm getting dangerously close to the cutoff, so I hope you're all doing well and I may vlog again. <laughs>